بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته hope everyone is in the best of health and iman welcome to our online discussion about the journey to the Quran and I have a very special guest with me someone who I consider a very close friend and a brother he is the chief imam and khatib of Dar Ummah in Shadwell, London and he is none other than Qari Ashikur Rahman. Qari Sahib, Assalamu Alaikum, how are you doing today? Alaikum Assalam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh, Habibi Nadir, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, I am very well. I am keeping well, I hope you are too. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm very well. How's your Ramadan going this year? Um, you know, my short answer that I say to make people laugh, but I probably can't say that now. I say, it's the same <laughs> for me because I'm still hungry. But yeah, it's been very different. It's been very different. It's been interesting. Alhamdulillah, it's, it's, it's going well. It's, you know, 16th fast today, so it's very, very quick, subhanAllah. Yeah, subhanAllah. It's very simple this year, isn't it? It's very different. I mean, you know, like, it, it's without all of the, you know, the, uh, ap- the extra activities, like, you know, the, the congregations and the taraweeh and, you know, all of these stuff. So it's, um, it's very different, subhanAllah. I mean, and these, these things are, in fact, you know, I said extra, but they're actually very central and very close and, at the heart of Ramadan, and so we, we so miss them, we miss them so dearly. Um, yeah. and yet it's the hikmah of Allah and the hukum of Allah that He has decreed that it should be like this this Ramadan 2020 or 1441. And um, there is you know, hikmah is hikmatullah is baligha, and hikmah of Allah is, is, is ultimate, and so there must be and there is some good in it. And I think some of those fruits we can already see how uh, you know, some masjids had have closed. But every single home, mashallah, every single Muslim home, most Muslim homes have now turned into Bayt Min Buyutillah, masjids from the Masjid of Allah Azza wa Jalla. That's amazing. That's, that in itself is amazing. Mashallah. Hey guys, so before we get into it, for the brothers and sisters who are watching, why did we decide to do this topic? As you know, it is Ramadan, the month of the Quran, the month where the Quran was revealed. And we hope that this online discussion inspires you or if you have children to become a hafiz, take a hips course. And one of the reasons that I wanted to do the hips course, that I became hafiz, was to make my parents happy. You know, no matter what we do, we can never repay our parents for the way they raised us, for the way they looked after us. And one of the rewards that our parents will gain for becoming a hafiz is that on the day of judgment, they will both receive a crown on their head, a crown that will shine brighter than the sun. So there are many, many virtues and rewards of becoming a hafiz. So inshallah, we hope that this inspires you to take on a take upon the hafiz course, inshallah. But before we start our first question, Qari Sa, we've got a request. Mm. Can you recite some Quran for us? Of course, some- no problem. I will I will recite. Inshallah, I think you know it's it's uh, you're obviously start leading the show. But we should also know that Hafiz and Qari Nadir Sab is a very, <laughs> very profound and excellent Hafiz and Qari of the Quran. Right. And he's single too. <laughs> uh, yeah, again, that's a joke. You've got to make a bit of a joke sometimes. Yeah, but yeah, he's, he's, he, he is who he is, mashallah. And I think we can hear some Quran from you as well. So after I do mine, at some point, I'll ask you to do some as well, inshallah. Just to keep the, the element of Quran and Ramadan you know, going. And and inshallah we can enjoy each other's tilawah with the Azwaj and everyone else who's joining as well can enjoy with the Azwaj. I will recite no problem inshallah. A'udhu billahi min ash shaytan ar rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن 
هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبر الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعاني فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى ما طلع الفجر صدق الله العظيم ما شاء الله قال يسعد أز بيوفو I always love your recitation always بارك الله فيك thank you بيه I always enjoy your recitation so it's up to you if you want to do it now or after a while yeah I'll do one now I don't mind بسم الله يلا شيخ يلا شيخ نادر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والشمس وضحاها والقمر إذا تلاها والنهار إذا جلاها والليل إذا يغشاها والسماء وما بناها والأرض وما طحاها ونفس وما سواها فألهمها فجورها وتقواها قد أفلح من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها كذب الثمود بطغواها إذ بعث أشقاها فقال لهم رسول الله ناقة الله وسقياها فكذبوا فعقروها فدمدم عليهم ربهم بذنبهم فسواها ولا يخاف عقباها صدق الله العظيم صدق الله لك ما شاء الله اللهم بارك من الله يكسب from you and from me and from everybody else that's joining and listening بارك الله فيك صدق الله خير قريسا Okay, before we start our first question, if any brothers and sisters have any questions, please do post them in the live comments and chats. Inshallah, throughout the program, we will try and ask Qadi Sab these questions. Okay, Qadi Sab, the first question I have is, what interest you, interested you or motivated you to become a Hafiz of the Qur'an? Mm, okay. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. You know, um, first of all, you can't actually become a Hafiz of the Qur'an yourself isn't it we know that right everything has to be with the permission of Allah that's of course we know but yeah of course what motivated me I think um, what motivated me was my father and my mother as well you know these were mashallah I, I don't know if you know my father was also mashallah half of Quran he was a alim he was mashallah he was very very you know uh, um, upright and strict about his deen and my mother also was mashallah and she still is you know, my father passed away, rahimahullah, but my mother, mashallah, she, she is like, um, she is someone that honestly, like, if you look about, if, if you think about exemplary women in the past, she is one of those that are walking right now, Allahu Akbar, you know, her passion, her zeal, her drive, her motivation, her energy, her, you know, a broad-mindedness, her far-ahead thinking, her, 
ability to manage and to macromanage and micromanage Allahu Akbar. He's amazing. And so these are people that motivated me and my father was half of the Quran as well, mashallah. Um, he became alim first, but then he finished his hives um, later on. And, uh, you know, he done it in a very short amount of time because he already had most of it in his mind, mashallah. My grandfather, my nana, was also a great alim, and many of my cousins from my nana's side are all her father and ulama, mashallah. My, my nana was Fadilat um, al-Sheikh uh, Abdul Ghaffar uh, al-Mamur Khani, who was a khalifa of uh, Hussein Ahmad Madani, rahimahumullah jami'an, rahmatan wasi'atan. And so they were, they were like, you know, sort of guiding lights, and my elder brothers, my, sheikh, my eldest brother, Sheikh Abdul Rahman, Imam, Imam of uh, Shah Jalal Masjid, he is also a half of Quran, and my second eldest brother, Fadilat al-Sheikh uh, Qadhi Lutfur Rahman, Hafizahullah wa Ra'a, who is the Imam and Khatib of Regents Park Mosque, graduated from Azhar, uh, came third in the international Quran competition of Egypt. He was also a half of the Quran, and these guys were sort of coming before me, you know. If I was the first one, then it would be like, yo, how'd you find your path? <laughs> but they, mashallah, they, tra- they, they traded that path before me, and, and they made it easy. And, you know, I can remember when I was growing up, I would hear, like, uh, more than, more than you know, quite frequently, I would hear, like, uh, Tilaw of Sheikh Abdul Basit being played, or Tilaw of Sheikh Sayyid Mutawalli being played, or Tilaw of Sheikh Tablaw being played by my brother Sheikh Lutfur Rahman, or otherwise. And so that, that, there was an environment of Quran, and my father was very strict about the Quran, so he pushed me. He pushed us, and he was like, you know, becoming a Hafid wasn't like, you know, hey, do you have a choice? It's just, you know, that's just what you're expected to become, you know. Not to say that it was a walk in the park, just like it was as easy as it was said. But you're expected. And so, you know, um, you probably know that I'm, I'm a freshie, right? In the sense that I was born in Bangladesh, okay? So, really? you know, I don't, I don't see that as, as, an, as an offense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so I was, didn't see that. Yeah, yeah, well, there you go. There's a lot of things you don't know. <laughs> There's one more thing. You know, you're the only person that calls me Karisam. Is it? <laughs> I, I like that because it's, it's a unique name you give me. Yeah. Thank you so much. No, I yeah, yeah. In 1997, when I came to this country, well, my, when my father brought us over, you know, uh, before that, we were going to our local uh, masjid in the village in Holakuta, you know, in Zaki I remember, honestly, I remember because it was quite vivid the memories. Like, I was seven when I came here. And, um, you know, uh, I can remember walking to the masjid and I can remember feeling cold on my feet as we would walk because it was like some of the win- some of the winter months quite chilly they had to go and sit in the in sort of the front area of the masjid and the mesab would teach you and then they'd mess up coming in the evening sometimes and all these memories are there vaguely some of them are vivid some of them are a, a bit less clear um and then when we came here you know dad was now the ultimate teacher and he would be teaching in many different places so he had a class in burner hall in uh, next to off mm. uh, just of cannon street uh, in Wapping, and I can remember my 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 my, my elder brother, Kazi uh, Shafiqur Rahman, who is the uh, the CEO of uh, of uh, one of the main founders, or what one of our co-founders of Sunnah Mosque and various mm-hmm. other businesses. You know, he he was um, we were together, and I can remember he was very tiresome because that is to take us everywhere. You know, one class after the other class, and then we have to go shopping afterwards, and then sometimes it'd be extra strict to us, so others. <laughs> Fix up, do you get it? So I think, yeah, in short, I mean, I'm taking too long to answer your question, but yeah, in mm-hmm. short, what really motivated me was my family. Yeah. MashaAllah. And may Allah have mercy upon your father. May he, um, you. um, may he reunite to you together with him in Jannah as well. Oh, Allah. Amin, Amin, Rabbil Alameen. Next question I have for up is, why Egypt out of all places? I mean, we have various madrasas in the UK where you could have taken up a hips course, but yeah. you decided to go Egypt all the way, like far away, other side of the world. Basically, um, I, I did go to the madrasas in this country. Basically, what happened is, I'll tell you what happened. So um, uh, I was, like I said, from you know uh, early primary school, I was here. And by the end of primary school, my father wanted me to start a madrasa, you know, from secondary school with GC. So I started going. We were the first batch of students from Madhahir al Ulum al Islamiya in Myland, you know, okay. which, was, which is run by Fadilat Sheikh Imdad al Rahman al Madani. He, we were the first batch of students to start off with that. And you know, you'd be surprised, one of my first teachers for Hibs was Sheikh Shams al Duha. And Sheikh Mullah Hafid Akhtar Sahib. You know, Sheikh Hafid Akhtar Sahib was my main teacher. 
And, you know, I remember them, mashallah, as amazing, amazing, especially Sheikh Akhtar, mashallah, amazing guy. So I was here in, 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 in Myland, you know, doing the Hibs and the, pri- and the secondary school together. And then and by the, in year nine, I went to a place called Madinatul Ulum al Islamiya fi Kidiminister, just outside Birmingham. And that's a boarding school. And it was, oh my God, I was just talking to my family a few days ago about what an experience boarding school is. And I don't know, you went to boarding school, and mashallah, you know, your experience was probably different to mine. But my experience in um, Kidiminister was extremely unique, you know, on so many levels. And but I think it shaped a person, and, you know, so I done a, a big chunk of the hips there. Done some of it with my dad initially, uh, some of it in Myland, some of it in uh, in, in in Kid Minister, and then by the end of Kid Minister, I'd already finished uh, my GCSEs, and, and and my dad became quite angry with our performance. So he said, "You're going to Bangladesh now because you know you're not behaving yourself, you're not reaching your targets, and etc." And there was a bit more to the story, but yeah, so he was quite annoyed with us, and so he sent m- myself and my brother again. You know the two. Me and uh, Shafiq, Ash- they used to say Ashik and Shafiq, you know, the, the two yeah. brothers. <laughs> yeah, so this, he sent us again to Bangladesh and we didn't like it. And big story happened there, you know. So we came back again within about a month's time. And then after that, to be sort of p- peace and please my dad, and I said, you know, I'll go back to boarding school again. And so this time I went to Bolton Madrasa, Darun Bolton, mm-hmm. for another six months. Yes. And then uh, six months I was there. And then I convinced my dad that hey, Abu, I want to, or Abba, you know, like I would say, I want to finish my hips with you, just like I started. You know, that was my way of getting away from boarding school. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm I started with you, I want to finish with you, and you know, sort of stuff. And and you know, I want to go to my, I'm going to go to Ibrahim College to finish uh, to start doing my alimiya. And so that happened. I started Ibrahim College. I started doing my A levels there. I started doing my um, uh, alimiya three years, the Islamic Science Program, and I finished my hips. You know. Yeah, she, you, you know, like sometimes people expect me to say, oh, yeah, I finished my hips in one year and it was like solid. Honestly, bro, I'll be completely honest, yeah. Until now, uh, people call me half of the Quran and, you know, I don't consider myself to be a proper half of the Quran yet. Why? Because I'm still working on my memory to be at such a stage that I can just sit down and read the whole Quran in one go. I mean, that's obviously a lot of people are like that. But for me, it's still a, a goal that, inshallah, I'm very close to achieving. But inshallah, I want to achieve that. So my journey with the Qur'an, as the title is, Journey to the Qur'an, is actually journey with the Qur'an. Because my journey with the Qur'an and to the Qur'an, it's still ongoing. And just like most of you know, the Hufad and the Khuddam of the Qur'an are out there, most of our journey with the Qur'an is still ongoing. And, and that's what's really important for us to realize is that the journey with the Qur'an, Allahu Akbar, is one that, that, that you, know, you pursue for a lifetime. You know, it's called Sahib al-Qur'an, Hamil al-Qur'an. Hamil indicates that he's carrying it all the time. And Sahib, the one that's a friend and befriends and, and the one that's a companion and the one that's, you know, the one that has the Qur'an with him all of the time. And so the Qur'an, it's a journey to and it's a journey with. And so Alhamdulillah, may Allah, you know, increase us and give us the ability to be steadfast in this path. And so, yeah, but again, so after all of that, Ibrahim College Science Program, three years finished that. Then I went to Egypt because my fa- brother was already studying there. And I cannot thank my dear friend, Sheikh Muhammad Yahya enough because he is the one that encouraged me really. When, when once I went to meet him to pick something up, my brother had sent from Egypt for me with him. And he said, you know, Ashik Bhai, you should come to Egypt, you know, you like it because you love the Quran and etc. And I was like, oh, whatever, man. I was too busy, you know, chilling out at that time, you know, I'm not chilling out, but you know, I wasn't, that was in my mind. Yeah. And lo and behold, a year later, I'm in Egypt, October of 2009, myself and Sheikh Muhammad Yahya and another brother called Abu Rayhan and my brother Sheikh Lutfur Rahman and his family were all on a plane and are going to Egypt. And immediately my Quran lesson started and my Arabic lesson started. I applied for Azhar and I went to Azhar and I graduated from Azhar, got ijazah, alhamdulillah, outside of Azhar in various qiraat, uh, studied the science of uh, you know mel- Quranic melodies, which is known as maqamat, but I don't like using the word because it's got a bit of controversy around it, uh, with various mashayikh, very prominent ones as well, mashallah, Shaykh Ahmad Mustafa Kamil, Shaykh Rufa Junai, um, uh, famous mashayikh, met, studied, benefited from. And uh, so it started from home, Went national, then went international, and now I'm back at home uh, doing this program with you. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. It all led up to this moment, didn't it? <laughs> Sorry, say that again? It all led up to this moment. 
subhanallah it did yeah it, it led up to this moment alhamdulillah yeah, it was, it's um it's, it's been a journey and it's, it's still ongoing and i'm really excited to see where this journey goes but i mean alhamdulillah a lot of people like associate uh, myself with the quran and the quran with me and uh, it's, it's such an honor, and just like they do with you, Sheikh Nadir, because mashallah, you're a, a very known half in our community, and you are imam of uh, Bow Community Masjid, and mashallah, you, your reputation is very well known. Um, uh, but what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that may Allah make us steadfast and take us further with that. I mean, being mm. known to be a person of the Quran, wallahi, being known to be a person of the Quran, it's one of the greatest honors, the greatest honors that one can have in his life. Allahu Akbar, you know, uh, being associated with the Quran, Kalamullah Azza wa Jal, Kalamullah Azza wa Jal, the words of Allah, it's speciality over all else, is like Allah's speciality over all else. And so to be associated with that, trust me, Akhi, it's just such an honor. And, you know, recently, I'll just give you one just thing to summarize it all. The Quran of Egypt, some of those famous ones, if you knew or if we knew the status that they held in their communities, in their societies, Allahu Akbar. Recently, Sheikh Tablawi passed away, rahimahullah. And if you, if you saw or heard the amount of praises he was receiving from across the world, from Saudi Arabia to Asia, Allahu Akbar, you know, or like other parts of, you know, the uh, Indian, other countries. And he was who? He was a person of the Quran. And he was receiving praises and du'as from every circle. And that's because Quran is universal. Quran. There isn't a single Muslim who can say, you know, I don't need the Quran. Because then, you're not really, you know, you're not really close to the origin of the deen. SubhanAllah. Well, quite, so I didn't know that you studied in so many like, madaris. I thought it was just Egypt. Come on. Come <laughs> on. So it's good. I mean, we're all learning. Listen, we all. Yeah. You went to Darlum Bari, right? Yeah, I did. Do you know you done a podcast last year with Maulana Ibrahim Sulti? Aha, uh-huh, aha, uh-huh, yes. Yeah, so he was in his final year of Alim class when I started. In Bari, right? In Bari, yeah. In Bari. Mashallah. Yeah, and, so, uh, but which one is it? There's a few in Bari, isn't it? There's only one. Oh, but, okay, okay, sorry. Uh, Bari was like one of the first Darul Looms to, to ever open. Oh, yes, 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 yeah. yes. The yeah, one with well, the, the, you have to go uphill and there's a water fountain. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And you posted a picture of your snow fighting on your social media recently. Love it, that, Love was a, it. that was a crazy day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we've, got, we've got a question from the comments, Qari Yeah. Um, the question is, Sheikh, which Qaris did you listen to to help you with your hips? Listen to uh, which card is did I listen to or do I listen to? Wallahi, the list is too long, man. <laughs> Me, look, I like I, I love the Quran and I like it being recited. And like, um, I, I prefer listening to Quran than reading myself a lot of the times, you know. Um, so I, my, my library of Quran I listen to start from you know the most known, like Sudais. I love Sudais, you know, you'd probably be surprised, but I love Sudais. Um, I love Sheikh Bandar Balila. Mm-hmm. I love Sheikh Mahir al Mayqali, Abdullah Awad al Juhani. I love Sheikh, uh, you know, Ali Jabir, and even some of the, you know, the the, the modern Quran. Mashallah, I love them all. Uh, and then I like, you know, uh, Sheikh Mishari. Oh, Sheikh Mishari back in two, 2009, man, he was he was a man. And I can remember driving around and like listening to Sheikh Mishari. He was so inspiring. And Sheikh Mishari, Mashallah, he was he started in Egypt. He's, you know, some people say he's a product of Egypt in that sense because he was. Produced and many in a sort of you know trained there, so Alhamdulillah, um, I listen to those Muratil Qurra. These are the ones that are slightly faster. As for Mujawad and slower pace, I initially started with listening to what my brothers and my family were listening to, like Sheikh uh, Abdul Basit and Sheikh Sayyid Mutawalli and Sheikh uh, Tablawi. By the way, this name that I keep on saying, Sheikh Sayyid Mutawalli, I don't think a lot of people know him in our in British community. And so uh, uh, there's a question uh, that says, how can I start loving the Quran in my day-to-day life? Wallahi, this is my tip. Start listening to these masters of recitation. Wallahi, I'm telling you, their art and their science that they deliver, deliver so meticulously and so exceptionally, these Quran, especially the different Quran when it comes to the slower pace. And there's a lot more art to it in the slower pace because there's a lot more going on. Starting from your, you know, the waqf and ibtida to the ahkam and tajweed to the salt and to the, to the to the maqam and to the qafala to the, you know, qarar and jawab and jawab and jawab, the pitches that they follow. So listening to these qurra, 
we will make you fall in love with the Quran. Sheikh Sayyid Mutawalli, his voice is extremely unique. Sayyid Mutawalli. And then I started listening to, when I first went to Egypt, one of my key teachers who helped me a lot, and I cannot thank him enough, is a Turkish sheikh who studied with various mashaykh. He's very well known in Turkey. He's an imam of a grand mosque in Turkey as well. His name is Sheikh Riza Junaid. And he's such a nice man. May Allah bless him and his family. Amen. And he hosted us in, in Turkey when we went with myself and my wife. We went uh, a few years ago and we stayed with his family and it was so nice. Anyway, so he was one of my first teachers in Egypt for, for Quran as in the, the melody of it and etc. Right? So he got me into my ultimate love for Quran, my ultimate passion. Let's see, if, would you know who that is? Mm. No. You can't say a friend of Ashik Rahman and then not know this person. This person, he is, look, this is my ultimate love for Quran, yeah? And I, I get so excited every time I speak about him. He's Sheikh Mustafa Ismail. Oh, yes. I saw, I saw a yeah. video on your YouTube channel. Yeah, no, 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 I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got to remember that name. Sheikh Mustafa Ismail is not known enough. He was, he was a gift of Allah. He was gifted from Allah and he was a gift of Allah to Allah. the field of Quran. Allahu Akbar. His voice and his mastery over the Quran and his mastery over the Qiraat and his mastery over the, the, the styles of recitation and his mastery over the delivery of the Quran. And on top of that, his unique madrasa and his style, Sheikh Mustafa Ismail is honestly, he's just amazing, man. And the amount of really inspired, you know, and he was one of the early of the Quran. Sheikh Abdul Basit is known, but he was, but there, was a genera there were generations of Quran above him, over him, before him. So Sheikh Mustafa Ismail is one of them, uh, just before uh, Sheikh Abdul Basit. You know, you had people like Sheikh Taha Al-Fashni, You've got people like Sheikh, of course, Sheikh Muhammad Rifaat, you know, Allah Akbar, these guys are amazing. So I'm just saying some of the names. Um, Sheikh Kamil Yusuf Al-Bahtimi, Sheikh Muhammad Imran, Sheikh, Ali, Sheikh Mahmoud Ramadan. These guys are masters of the Quran. Listening to these guys, right, will make you fall in love with the Quran. Wallahi. Uh, uh, so so, so these, are, these, are, these are sort of people that take you by your hand and say, here's what the Quran can do for you. Here's what it can sound like. Listen to it, enjoy it, be inspired by it. Even if you can't recite like them, at least you be, you will change and you will improve and you will feel different about the Quran by listening to them. Subhanallah. I know one of my favorite sites from Egypt is, I'm sure you see my status, uh, Qari Zab, it's Qari Mahmoud Shahad. Of I course. Love of course. Uh, Qari Mahmoud Shahad is known as the Prince of Quran at the moment in Egypt. His yeah. father, uh, Shahad Anwar, he was one of the greatest of the Qurra of the previous generation. He was frequently invited across the world. And his elder brother, uh, Anwar Shahat, is also a great Qadi. I met him personally. Mahmoud Shahat, I met him personally as well, alhamdulillah. Um, so these were these are amazing Qurra of our modern day. But uh, the reason why I didn't mention the name is because I, I've got this thing, and this personal thing, right? So it doesn't mean anything. It's, I, 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 I happen to be enjoying the tilawa of those who passed away already. I don't know why that is, because I've got a thing with classic recitation. You see, I, I like, because um, if you've got a, uh, if you've listened to Quran a lot, especially in Mujawad style, then you develop this extra sense and you're able to sort of realize uh, a bit more deeper into what's going on. And there's the, the, the modern reciters, they have a particular way of reciting. You know, it's a bit more easy on the tongue, it's a bit more looser it's a bit more relaxed it's a bit more i mean the melody is amazing but it's 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 more it's not as complex or or, or we can say dense you know um and so these kind of things really appeal to me and mustafa ismail and muhammad imran and mahmoud ramadan these guys are masters of that yeah oh. yeah uh yeah uh, there's a book a beautiful book and you will surely fall in love with the words Good advice being given. Listen to the to the master of the Quran reciting this beautiful book. Okay. You mentioned the different types of recitation, the different types of the way we can recite. Can you maybe maybe give us a a small, like a small maybe an ayah or two of the different way? Yeah. So the differences in Quran, the different ways of reciting the Quran. Uh, one, one, one difference or one type of difference refers to the speeds. So you got, you got the hadar like Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, 
Malik Yawuddin Iyaka Na'abud Wa Iyaka Nasta'in That's obviously the faster pace The rawih pace And then you know Sheikh Mishari Sort of pace Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Whatever like His tune I can't really copy Like that Okay and It's a bit slower And then you got The slow Mujawad pace Which is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawuddin Deen. Slower. That's that's the different types in terms of the speeds. Mm. Then of course you've got the different qiraat and the dialects. Hmm? The different qiraat and the dialects of the Quran, which are uh, mm. recorded by ulama in various mutun, like the Shatibiyah, like the Durra, like the Tayyibah, Tayyibat al Nashr of uh, Sayyidina al Imam. Al-Imam Al-Jazari Rahimahullah Rahmatan Wasi'a And the other two texts of Sayyidina Al-Imam Al-Imam Al-Shatibi Rahimahullah um, These were These are collections And, and, and uh, books Which explain Our references For The Qira'at Which were Taught to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam By Sayyidina Jibreel As he taught him The Quran He taught him to recite, recite them In Slight different uh, You can say Lughat Or Harf Is the, the Hadith term for it they have slight variations in certain words and certain mudud and certain way of pronouncing vowels. Okay, and these qiraat are ten in total, and each ten of the qiraat have two riwayas each, and which makes them a total of twenty riwayat, which are mutawatira, twenty variants of reciting the Quran, which are mutawatira, so vastly narrated that they are impossible to be called false or faulty. And they are allowed to be recited in Salah, Fard and otherwise uh, These 10 Qur'at Mutawatira are the other types of differences that you're talking about And so um, there are various Qur'an, mashallah, and Hafaz of the Qur'an in our community Who have got ijaza in all 10 Qur'at From them is my dear friend Sheikh Muhammad Yahya Hafizahullah Imam of Masjid Kumaira uh, and I love that guy, so he was speaking about him, mashallah, may Allah bless him, and his knowledge in Qur'an is just so deep. Um, uh, and then you've got other mashayikh like Sheikh Qari Mushid Habib and Sheikh uh, Hafiz rahman and various others in our, in our community, mashallah, who've got the, uh, the, the Qur'an and, and, and studied them. I myself have studied, um, because I was busy with Azhar and graduating and getting married and having kids and uh, a lot of other things and, and, and enjoying my time as well, I, I, I took a bit more of a broader approach to my studies. And so I only managed to finish two of the Qur'at, which gives me four riwayat, and they are The two riwayat belong to Imam Asim, which is Hafs and Asim and Shu'bah and Asim Shu'bah comes first usually So Hafs is the one that is most widely known across the world as, you know, as a known uh, 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 You could say a dialect of reciting, which is known Hafs in Alhamdulillah, the way, the way that Makkah and Medina they all recite mm. And Shu'bah is also very similar to it, but some differences and the other one that I've got ijaza in, but from my Sheikh, Udilat Sheikh Ahmed Mustafa Abdul Munim of Al Jiza, who messaged me even today. Um, he yeah, or I and we communicate I communicate with him regularly because you must keep in touch with your Mashaykh. Um, he uh, he he gave me ijaza in Asim and also in Hamza. Hamza al Kufi, he was he had two students who were Khalaf and Khalad. And the same Khalaf has got a Qur'an of his own Khalaf al Ashir as well, who comes later on towards the end of this science of Qur'an. Um, and so I have got ijazah in both of them. And yes, you asked me to recite something from the Al Surah Fatiha. Yeah, that's fine. Surah, Surah Fatiha sounds very different in Hamza, especially Khalaf. So this is what this is how Imam Khalaf would say Surah Fatiha. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahmanir Rahim. ملك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الزراط المستقيم زراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا Amin. Mashallah. That was beautiful, Karisa. May Allah accept it, bro. Amin. You know, beauty, beauty, if it's beautiful in the sight of Allah, then Alhamdulillah. May Allah accept it and benefit, benefit, make us all beneficial for His deen. Amin. Amin. 
Um, I've got another question from the comments, Kari Sub. Um, someone's asked, mm -hmm. any advice for someone who has very bad memory to memorize Quran and they want to become a Hafiz? Okay. Yes. Um, um, that you know, and we've got to appreciate that question because let's be honest, not everyone's memory is on the same level. Some find it very easy to memorize and while others find it a bit more difficult. My advice to you, my dear friend, my dear brother or sister, whoever you may be, is that you know, Allah al -Azim, you know, the hadith that says that, you know, um, whomsoever recites the Quran and finds it difficult, then they have the two reward. One for the for the for the for the hasanat for the reward of the reciting and the other for the effort. And so Allah you've got to carry on trying, just keep on trying, push yourself until you until you feel like you're tiring yourself out and try to, you know, close your eyes and remember these words that you're trying to memorize and take it slow, take it easy. But then before that, find a good teacher. This is very important to, to learn the Quran. You've got to have a good teacher, you know. So someone like Sheikh Nadi, find him and hunt him down. Find out where he's, what his schedule like, and and learn from him, inshallah. Now have a, have a good teacher and explain to the teacher your problem. No one of those teachers say, oh, you know, you don't know. Let's, mm. you know, no one of those kind of things. But teachers that really, really sort of guide you and you know, and live up to the standards of the Quran. Allah says, Al Rahman wa Al Quran. Allah says, the Rahman taught the Quran. He's merciful one. The mercy of one taught the Quran. So you've got to teach the Quran with mercy and kindness, compassion and, and, and accepting of people's differences and standards and etc. So find a good teacher and take it at your own pace. One thing I'm going to say, you might be like, yo, this guy is, what's he saying? But this is true. You've got to enjoy your studying of the Quran. Hmm. Maybe I'm saying that because I did that myself. Like I took it slow and took my time. But you've got to really enjoy it. It's more important that you enjoy the Quran than it is than, uh, to, to cram it all in. Because we want to love the Quran, Jesus. You want to love the Quran so that our relationship with the Quran carries on for a lifetime. And we want our kids to love the Quran so that their relationship with the Quran carries on for a lifetime. And they can't, they don't remember the Quran as to be, oh, it was just like a, a bunch of hours and etc. So learn to love the Quran, listen to different Quran, see who you like. And, you know, listening to the Quran helps you to memorize it a lot. So if you, for example, like a Qari now, Okay, for example, Hazal Balushi or like, you know, or any of the other, Zaid Shanti, a lot of, mashallah, young Quran mm -hmm. as well. Um, you know, and you like their voice, or Sheikh Hafiz Rahman or, or Sheikh Nadir, mashallah. What you do is you get the part that you want to memorize and you repeat it again and again and again. Okay, while you're sleeping even, if it's for the sake of learning, you can leave it on. Yes, you probably never heard that before, but yeah, you can. If it's for the sake of learning, you can leave it on so that you're, you know, you get used to it and you fall asleep. You're listening to it or anytime you're walking, you're running your one day exercise that you're probably doing or you're on the bus or you're doing something else just listen to that same part again even if it's one line two line half line and then you come and read it and when you read it make sure you don't have any distractions Allah says Inna wa 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 um, uh, so um, the, he says that the remembrance of the Quran or the recitation of the Quran in the night is better for its for instilling it, installing it, for memorizing it, okay, and it's 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 more it's it's a better time. Why? Because it's a calm time, it's a quiet time. And so when you want to memorize the Quran, make sure your environment is correct. Make sure your your niyyah is correct. You're listening to a qari that you like. You have you are in a state of wudu and facing the qibla and all the adab of the Quran are being maintained. You find a good teacher. You choose a sh the easier parts and you go in small pieces and increments and you know slowly, slowly. And the method of uh, memorization and Sheikh Nadir can of course help me with this as well is that you know you take a small part of it. For example, Alhamdulillah, you know sort of you want know, to memorize it, yeah. And I call this the, the 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 blockchain or the chain that you make of of the Quran, the silsila that you make. And so what you do is first you establish the first block of the chain, okay, which is the first phrase. So mm -hmm. for example, it was Alhamdu. You say Alhamdulillah, 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 again and again by looking until it's there. Then you close your eyes, Alhamdulillah, 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 again and again until it's there, clearly up there. That's the first chain built. Then you go to the next chain, Lillah. Okay? So you, you build that chain, you build that block. Say Lillahi, 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 looking, Lillahi, 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 without looking. Now you know Lillahi without looking and Alhamdulillah without looking too. But you might not both of them, you might not know both of them. Together with that. So you now connect the two blocks. Say, Alhamdulillahi, 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 until you know it properly. Close your eyes again. Now, there is no number to this. Mm. Okay? 
But some people ask me about numbers. I say there is no number to this. The number is what you find it easy. What you uh, what makes you memorize? What makes it easy for you to memorize? That's what it is. It's not about ten or twenty. There is no such number. Until you feel like it's solid, okay. Um, that's that's um, that's when you should, that's when you move on to the next part. So Alhamdulillah, without looking, and then Rabbil, create the chain, connect the chain. Alamin, create the chain, connect the chain, and then in the end, you come up with the block of chain or the silsila of the chain and then you are able to move from one block to the other block to the other block until you've read the whole page or the surah or the whole juz or the whole quran inshallah one day inshallah it's a very good uh, advice there um yeah just practice and practice that i would say listening is a yeah. very good way of learning so yeah i've got another question from uh, comments is tone important when reciting or making sure that the tajweed is right when reciting? Mm. Tone is important. And for those who tone down tone are not doing the right thing. If, if you um, got that. You can't tone down the tone because the tone is the part of the sunnah. You know? Uh, the Prophet said that whomsoever hasn't recited the Quran in a melodious way, then he hasn't. He's basically not really, you know, from us. He's not. He's not doing what we're supposed to do. Okay. And when Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, radiyallahu anhu arda, used to recite very nicely, he used to say, min mazamiri ali Dawood." He used to praise him and say, "You've been given from from the gifts of uh, Sayyidina Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam because Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam used to have a very beautiful voice." Uh, and so therefore, a reciting in a beautiful way is from the sunnah of the Prophet and the Sahaba and, 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 and we must respect that. But before that, we must first correct our makharij and sifat and ahkam al-tajweed. If you can maintain ahkam al-tajweed and at the same time recite beautifully, then nurun ala nur, amazing. You know, mm -hmm. light upon light, meaning in that sense that it's beautiful, one beauty added to another beauty. Um, and so therefore, Reciting with tone is important, but the first and foremost is you've got to build the block first. So let's go back to the building of the block. You build the block, then you paint it. Right? Or you build the bricks, and building of the bricks is making sure that the bricks are the right size and shape. And the right size and shape are the makharaj and sifat, and the ahkam al tajweed. And the joining in between the cement are your, are your ghunan and your idgham and your mudud. So they've also got to be correct. The right amount, the right, you know, thickness, the right length, etc. So Makhad and Sifat are the building blocks. What joins them between them is the Ghunna and the Ikhfa and the Idram and the Mudud, cement. Once you've corrected your Ahkam al Tajweed, okay, by building your structure correctly, then you can now get whatever paint you want, not whatever paint, but you can paint it now. You can, you know, put wallpaper on it, you can paint on it, and that would be your tones and tunes. So you got to follow the order. MashaAllah. Um, Jazakallah The next question I have, I have another question from the comments. Um, my son, my sons who are 10 and 6, they have started hips, but sometimes when taking their revision, it's like pulling out teeth. I feel I may be hard on them, but I don't want them to lose the love of the Quran. SubhanAllah. Yeah, yeah um, don't pull their teeth out. <laughs> <laughs> Allah Allah. Khan, it's a very good question and it's something that I'm also struggling with. My son's also nearly six. He's five now, but he's nearly six. And luckily today, you know, the missus has locked them into the room for their nap and that's why they're not jumping on me. But yeah, kids are so amazing and they're so difficult as well sometimes. And you know, it's uh Shaykh Nadir will know soon, inshallah. <laughs> um yeah, um it's with kids you've got to be different, man. It's a different ball game with kids. You gotta you gotta really broaden your mind and broaden your horizons and think differently because every kid is different, right? But despite all of the differences, for Talbiya and for the education, you've got to be a bit strict with them, okay? Because let's, be, let's face it, if we weren't strict with them, then no kids would go to school. No kids would do any sort of learning. So you've got to push them. Push them and know that, you know what, I'm, 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 I'm sort of I'm, I'm, uh, justifying it. So push them hard and then say, you know what, I'll buy you a kind of surprise if that's their age. <laughs> And do you know what? Go to Iceland and get a three pack for two pounds. You save a pound there. There's no more local shops charge you one pound each. Iceland got three kind of. <laughs> you get you get you get the drift, right? Yeah. So have a reward scheme. You know the Quran is you know the Quran in itself is a method of teaching the Quran. 
Who do I mean? Allah says, Allah taught the Quran. Allah, the Rahman taught the Quran. Allah taught the Quran. And the way Allah taught the Quran is that in the Quran, He has certain ayat which are encouraging and others which are, which strike and cause fear. So there is Jannah which encourages you and there's Jahannam that scares you. So in Tarbiya, similarly, we've got to have uh, this concept of rewarding schemes and 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 and, and rewar uh, rewarding schemes and and having something to look forward to, something that they want to themselves reach. So if it's a kinder surprise or if it's a kinder bueno, my personal favorite, or um, uh, or anything else, right? Having that target and then at the same time pushing from the back as well, saying you've got to do this. No way, you've got to wake up now. What do you mean you're falling behind? And you know you can't do that. Come on, let's do this. Um, and don't be so rigid because kids, especially if they're young, you know, you know, we as adults, you know, we should maintain all the adab of the Quran, etc. And we even find it difficult sometimes, you know, to always sit down correctly and, you know, to 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 treat the Quran as it ought to be treated. And so with kids, sometimes they want to just sit down, sometimes they want to lie down, sometimes they want to walk around, sometimes they want to run around. It's just, you know, take it, take it with that. But I say, you know, um, I can't give a, a to Z a recipe. But you've got to take these principles on board, uh, think broadly, uh, maintain the love of the Quran, have rewards involved with it, you know, try to make a, a family thing. You recite the Quran as well. That would make them think, hey, I want to recite the Quran too. Because uh, kids copy, they don't listen. It's a principle. Mm -hmm. Kids copy, they don't listen. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, all of these things. I hope some of, the, some of what I've said has been beneficial. Yeah. And I like to say, just make it more fun for the kids. Just make it more That's fun. That's definitely true. Definitely. Yeah. You know, recently my, my son, I was trying to force my son to do thingy, um, to do some Quran, to recite, recite the surahs. And he goes, Abu, no, I don't want to recite the surahs. Let's do the Quran plan game instead. And there's a new thing called Quran plan. You know, they make Quran games. And it's really nice. It's, it's basically, and you know what? He actually ended up reading more surahs than I wanted him to. Because you, you basically, you take your turn and then you, wherever you land, you have to recite that surah. Or go back a step or go forward a step. And he ended up reading more surahs, difficult surahs, hard surahs, short surahs. Yeah, so making it fun. Yeah, make it fun. That's what I would say. And make sure they practice a lot. Because the madrasha actually starts from the home. It's not, you don't put them in madrasha and then expect them to be good and learn the entire Quran. The madrasha starts from the home. Yeah, 100%. The, the home is the first madrasa, 100%. I couldn't agree with you one other way. Okay, the, next, the next question I have, Paris, is... How old were you when you started and how long did it take you for you to complete the Quran? Now this is where people are going to think, okay, what a waste of a show, I shouldn't have listened to this guy. <laughs> because you know what, you're expecting me to say like, yeah, oh, I smashed it one year, bro, one time. But you know what, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't conform. It took me ages to learn the Quran. And you know why? Because I'll be, I'll be honest, I wasn't the most well-behaved of uh, kids. And you can ask my mummies and my mamas about that, you know. <laughs> uh, I, I, used to, I used to take it easy. And I think that's helped me in that sense. In the sense that, I mean, it took me a long time. So I started from the age of seven, eight, and I finished like way later. And I'm still working on finishing it. And, you know, I'm still trying to perfect my Quran. And so it's, it's a long journey, like I said before. Um, uh, but I, I did finish it, you know, at some point around the age of, 16 and but I started a lot earlier from year 7 so it took me a long time like 5 years you could say you know I officially started my hives in first year of uh, secondary school and before that I was doing some with my dad as well and I knew the, the, the 30th it was, and by the end of secondary school I kind of finished here so you could say that kind of time frame but it took me actually longer than that um, and so yeah it took me a long time but you know what it's fine it's fine. It's not a big deal. It's not about the time. It's about consistency. It's about loving the Quran. It's about enjoying the Quran. It's about having a passion for the Quran and, 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 and living with it and, and continually improving in it. And in that sense, I'm grateful to Allah that Allah has kept me uh, uh, in this line and to because of uh, good thoughts of brothers like yourself and brother Saeed who's organized this and al waqi and others who you know tell me that I've, I'm connected with the Quran somehow. This helped me to carry on with the journey of the Quran, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. The next question I have, Qarisab, is what was your daily routine like in Egypt? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but can I ask you a question? I, I, I don't know this. I've got to ask you this before I before move on. How long did it take you to become Hafiz? Me? Mm. Oh, I started after uh, 
I went to Darulum after my GCSEs, but I did start my hymns around year eight, year nine. So I started off part time in Shahpura Masjid in Hackney Road. That's where mm -hmm. I started. And then my dad was saying, like, son, you're taking too long. I'm going to ship you off to boarding school. You have to finish it over there. <laughs> you have to ship you, ship you off as if you've been, you know, shipped off for work somewhere. <laughs> so, yeah. So by the time I finished, I think I was 17 when I finished. So about roughly three, four years as well. Like you, for example. Yeah, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, mashallah. Mashallah. Yeah, and you're also doing your taraweeh at home, isn't it? Now you've told me that you yeah. finished uh, yeah. Nahal on uh, a couple of nights ago, so that means you 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 finished 16 yesterday. Yeah, so we're nearly done, inshallah. Nearly done slowly, slowly. Um, what was my daily routine like in Egypt? Uh, it was, I don't know, man. I was there for like 10 years in total, so it was very different. Like not all days were the same. Um, I mean, he's like. Let's be honest as well that you know, uh, Egypt is not the same as as UK. In the sense that we don't go, there isn't a madrasa that you go to and you stay there and there's a teacher saying, hey, you wake up in this budget time and, you know, you've got to do your door and you've got to do your class. It's not like that. Egypt is, there are madaris maybe like that, but it's not a commonality. Mm. You go there, it's independent studies and most, most of it. So you wake mm. up and you have your set of classes that you've arranged for, you paid for. And alhamdulillah, this is one thing that I'm, you know, proud of. And I'm happy and I appreciate my father for teaching me this, is that from the age of... From the age of like uh, when I was in Ibrahim College, from the age of sixteen, he said, "I'm not paying for anything. You're paying for everything of yourself." So I was paying for my own fees in Ibrahim College, most of it, I think. Yeah, from what I recall, I was I paid for my own first car, I paid for my clothes. From then, I paid for my own journey to Egypt. Um, I saved up for it. I used to work in a stall in Whitechapel. I I done this stuff, you know, and and I saved up for it, and it, it took me to be taught to me to be you know, sort of you know. Maintaining yourself and when you're in Egypt that really helps because you've got to manage yourself your money You've got to manage your money your time and it really you got, you need that level You need that level of maturity and so boarding school helped with that regard because boarding school was just survival mate mm. it, was, it was it was you know it was serious stuff <laughs> and so that 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 made Egypt a bit easier um, So Egypt routine was different you wake up you sometimes have a class early depending on and then when I went to university I would usually go to university early in the morning like 8 a.m then i would um you know come back about 3 p.m 4 p.m have a rest you know and then uh, in the evening again look 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 at this in in, in i can remember in uni times i would revise but then sometimes i'd have to teach online to maintain that financial flow so okay. i teach sometimes on skype to students from from london from bristol um and and that's just you know you've got to do that you've got to spread as you go and you've got to also work so um it, the routine was unique, different, and every day was different. Allah, it's just it's hard to summarize it. What was the food like over there, Khalizam? You know what? I was lucky, man. Yeah. Allah, the food is different. The food is different. There is the, they have the the falafels and they have the fool and tami and kushari and and the mashwiyat and you know th there's different price tags on food. So depending on how much you spend, you can get very cheap and street food like kushari, tamiya, shakshoka, or fool. Or you know, just like a with something else with 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 bilba, or like you can you can get, for example, a mix of the two, different kind of sandwiches, you know. Yeah. Um, or you can get a slightly more expensive, like grilled foods and grilled chicken and grilled meat and rice and all that <coughs> stuff. But luckily, I was lucky because I had when I first went there, my elder brother was there, Sheikh Lutfu Rahman, and his family would feed me. So Bobby was like sorting it out, mashallah, had, you know, homemade food regularly. Alhamdulillah. Allah bless Bobby and his and and and, and by and and all the whole family for supporting me and you know taking me on this journey with them. And then later on, by 2012, I got married. So then Bobby didn't have to cook for me so much. I had someone else to cook for me now. I got married, and within three weeks, I was in Egypt. You know, and I I think I, I think to myself, and I think you know, my in-laws were like. They must have really liked me, man, because <laughs> for you for you to get, <laughs> or maybe it was my wife that really liked me. I don't know. Um, uh, and because for you to get married and then just go with your family straight away to Egypt within that short space of time is just you know it's it's quite a big step. And um, yeah, so she started she started feeding me, or well, we started helping each other. I would help a lot. No one like I do still help a lot as much as I can. In, at home, mashallah, and um, she was taking lessons on cooking and stuff from her mom over Skype. 
Allahu Akbar. It's so funny. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it just, you know, life, you know, as as it goes, it's just you. Got, if you keep an open mind to it, you know, you can have a laugh about it later on. Now, guys, are you lucky? You had good luxuries over there. I didn't have that much reason, Darulum, in terms of food. No, what? bro. I, you, I in Darulum, mate. Bro, I'm telling you, your survival in Kedi Minister. I can remember we'd have three and a half hour class, Hibs class in the morning, and for breakfast we'd have three biscuits. I mean, I shouldn't be saying this stuff because they might get in trouble for this. <laughs> but it was raw, bro. Oh. And, then, and most of the class, like like I said, I took my time with my hips, so I would be standing because, you know, I didn't say my stomach or something. And then and it, it would be hard, man. Yeah. And yeah. then lunch and dinner, you know, you'd have to share a plate with someone else. And then, and then, you know, it really depends on what's on the menu, if it's dal or with rice or something else with roti or something, you know, it's, it's hard, man. I, I, you know, one of, the, one of my main memories from Darulong times is, is hunger. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Allah, but that's why I say it was, I don't want to go into the details, but it was, it was hard. But then again, I say it trained me, it built me, it made me stronger. It taught me to survive and to live and to, and to sort of, you know, be, make do with what we have and, um, would make sandwiches and our sandwich makers would take food from home um, and a lot of different ways you know alhamdulillah it's good yeah no, cool it, it humbles you because um, when I went there I didn't know how to like, iron my clothes or wash dishes no, nothing like that because mum used to do everything for me so I had to learn everything because you live on your own yeah, you yeah. have roommates and stuff what about now do you iron your clothes yeah now I do <laughs> now I do now I do I help, I help more around the house <laughs> yeah that's good that's good mashallah Mashallah. How come some people don't recommend color coded Qurans? Well, because I don't know who does that. Why don't why don't you recommend color coded Qurans, people? Um, but basically it might be because it it, it makes you too reliant on the color codes <clears throat> and not as reliant on the tajweed rules if memorized. That's what it is. That might be the reason. Or because they don't like the colours. Maybe they would prefer if it was like pink and yellow or something and not blue and red. But I think that's probably what that, the main reason is probably not to make you true line up on the colours for the Tajweed, rather you learn how to recite with Tajweed without the colours. <clears throat> Got another comment uh, comment from the uh Sheikh, can you please expand on the intentions or reciting Quran? Entire intentions for reciting Quran I think that would probably mean sorry. Yeah. And maybe Mr F. But yeah of course the intention of reciting the Quran Intention of reciting the Quran, yes, correct himself is. Um, look, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ Any ibadah that we do has to be مُخْلِصًا لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ It has to be only sincerely for the sake of Allah Jalla wa'ala. That's it. You want to do it for the sake of Allah, man. And if you do it for the sake of Allah, then Allah will accept it. And Allah doesn't accept anything that's accept, any, does not accept anything unless it's طيب and it's pure. And it's sincerely for his sake, even if it's partially tainted with a faulty intention, like I want to please someone on a show off, then that ibadah has gone down the drain. <laughs> what a shame, right? Um, <laughs> so, um, so your intention has to be for the, for the sake of Allah. And after that, once you've corrected your intention, then alhamdulillah, recite the Quran in front of people, recite the Quran in public, in, in, in privacy, by yourself, with your friends. And, and on this note, I'm going to say this now, right here, right now, I'm going to say this, yeah. If someone has got good intentions about the Quran and wants to leave a legacy of being remem remembered with the Quran and wants to uh, leave a legacy of the Quran in his voice so that people can listen to afterwards and he can get the ajr of it um, afterwards, then there's no harm in leaving your Quran uploaded on YouTube or social media because some people have uh, uh, doubts about this as well. Um, and so therefore, if the intentions are correct, that's the main thing. Your intention has to be correct, your ahkam has to be correct. You have to have a good teacher to teach all of this stuff. Alhamdulillah, it's good. And you do the right things with the Quran. You understand the Quran. You teach the Quran. You propagate the Quran. You practice the Quran. This, this is what is. That's what it means to be a Sahib al-Quran, Hamil al-Quran, that you practice the Quran, you teach the Quran, you propagate the Quran. Is it too late to learn the Quran in the mid-30s? Well, I'm in my... I mean, my, I'm, I'm, I'm 30 and I'm still learning the Quran, so Allah is not too late. Yeah, it's never too late. Um, how do you find it? Yeah, go on. I'll let you read it. Teacher. Well, um, inshallah, if you contact the Waqiya team and then get them to put you in touch with uh, Sheikh Nadir, <laughs> then you'll find him many things, including a teacher and many other things, inshallah, a friend and um, a very kind man. Um, yeah, I know. You see, I mean, someone is working on an app, I think. 
to try and find, and I don't know if they were being serious. And I, but of course, there is the UK Hafad Association. There are local imams that can guide you, other teachers that can guide you to other teachers. Contact a mosque if you want to help you. And just to go back to the question about the mid thirties, I don't want to sort of you know sort of make it take it lightly. But one there is no, uh, uh, it's never too late. But let's just take a simple example. Sahaba, many of them accept Islam, you know, in their late years, and they. Many of them, they become hafal of the Qur'an as well. It's not a problem, inshallah. And even if the Sahaba, others who started have late, they also finish late, inshallah. It's, no, it's possible. It's just a matter of training, finding the right teacher and the right motivation, inshallah. Kaiser, what about those who are not from the UK? It's the same everywhere. It's just, the principle is the same. Because you've got to find a teacher and you've got to find, um, you've got to find a teacher and you've got to find a uh, uh, that motivation and the drive and keep on going because there are many Hufal and there are more Hufal outside the UK uh, Qais, we've got another question um, Any advice on how to keep the Muraja strong? Perhaps a revision rotor? Yeah, definitely I, I, You know what it is? When it comes to Muraja and Sheikh Nadir can probably agree with me in this is there's no there's no flowery fancy, fancy way of doing it you just got to do it, mate Yeah, you just got to sit down you, and do you, it You just got to sit down and do it you know, if you're half of the Quran, you should do, you should be, you should be doing at least one juz a day, and you should be doing one juz a day from your memory. Uh, if you can't do it from memory, then learn the part and do it from your memory. That's it's just that's just how, that's the raw way of doing. It. You've got to do it like that. There's no yeah. fancy way of doing it, unfortunately. And yes, you can have a rose like for example, at least once every thirty days you're finishing the khatma without looking, or even better once every fifteen days, or even better once every ten days. Every ten days is preferred. Many many mashaykh maintain that, and that will be very strong for your health, inshallah. Inshallah. One thing I would recommend is probably try recite five sides after every salah. Because I think one juz is about 20 sides, isn't it, Qadisa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it depends on which mushaf you use, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so one juz a day, five sides after every prayer. Mashallah. Qadisa, I've um, got another question from my side. Um, did you have every, ever have moments where you wanted to give up? Oh, man. Yes, there have been moments I wanted to give up and especially like, you know, when things got really tough and um, I'm doing taraweeh now and I'm doing one just a trying to do one just a day. I don't want to speak too soon. And I can remember on like the seventh night in Surah Naam, I got a bit mashed up. So I came home and I was like, you know, I was like probably complaining to the missus. I was like, oh man, I don't know if I can do this. And, you know, I, I wanted to give up even now. Can you imagine? Like I went, now I'm 30 years old. I've, I've, I've had leading taraweeh for like more than 10 years. So lots of experience, and yet we feel like this sometimes. You do feel like you want to give up sometimes. And there's nothing wrong with that. We're human beings, you know. Sometimes the car wants to give up on us because it's so tired, it's overheated and stuff. So, but it's just a matter of taking a break, take it easy. And that's why I tell a lot of people that I go to study is, you got to know your limits and don't push yourself too hard. Push yourself hard, but don't burn yourself out, because then you're gonna you're gonna run out and you're gonna basically come home probably crying. Hope not. That's not the case. Um, but you got to take a break sometimes. Take a break. And I remember that day, I took a break. And I was like, you know, I'm not doing anything today, man. I'm I'm done. I'm just going to chill for now. And then once you feel like you're energized again, you're refreshed again, then you carry on. You, you feel like that. But you're going to, you got the consistency. This and this is one of the things that I say as well. Consistency isn't about doing something every single day. It is about doing every single day. But if that one day or those few days. Or those few weeks ago where you haven't actually been consistent, then it's about picking yourself up again. And that, you know, breaking and coming and falling and standing, that together makes the consistency um, a reality. Alhamdulillah. So, um, guys, so we're not going to go on for too long, so I'm just going to wrap it up with a few more questions. Yeah, uh, Martha is going to finish at three o'clock. Bismillah. Come on. <laughs> um, another question I have is. Um, what does your routine consist of now in order to pres uh, um, persevere the memorization? Preserve, sorry. Yeah. Hmm. My, my, what I try to do is I try to, because I'm Imam of Darul Umma, I try to recite, um, um, and you probably noticed this, Sheikh Nadir, because you come regularly, mashallah. I try to recite parts of the Quran as I go through the Salah. So Isha, I try to recite some, Fajr, I try to recite some, and I try to do a khatma like that's one thing I do. Another thing I do is with my friend, Sheikh Muhammad Yahya, recently we started this. Uh, every Saturday we sit down and we do five juz each. So we do ten juz. That takes about five hours, you know. 
and and we do it like that so that that really pushes me to revise as well and so because i've got that system in place that's something re- very modern now. like what i'm doing currently uh, since ramadan we've had to stop because of you know everyone's busy but that's really really pushed me and and and, and improved my tilawa and my recitation so what does that mean for me what does that mean for you it means for you that you can recite your hips parts in salah or take up what Sheikh Nadir said to recite some after every salah or find a friend who's a hafiz and you know have a plan of you know, joining each other for, for tilawa these are things you can do inshallah inshallah and Farisab, when you were in Egypt will you be able to speak the language the lingo and what advice would you give to the viewers thinking about pursuing a similar uh, similar path sorry but they don't speak the language the lingo يعني انت انت بتقول لي يعني مش مكلم مصري يعني امال ايه احنا بنكلم مصري عم في ايه يعني انت تفاكرنا ايه احنا على قدنا برضه بس ايه ما فيش مشكله ان شاء الله بيسكلي ذا لينجو يو غوت تو ليرن ابيت وير ايفر يو ار بيكوز اذروايز بيبل تيك يو فور ا جوك سو الحمد لله ازيبل تو ليرن ذا لينجو اي ليرن عربي اوف كورس بيكوز ذات واز ا بارت ماي سيلبس اني واي يو كان جراديوت فروم ازو ذات نون عربي سو اول ماي سيلبس ان عربي سو فصحى ذا كلاسيكال عربي كذا الحمد لله But the lingo is where a lot of people maybe you know not people don't focus on that. But I did learn Alhamdulillah uh, a lot of Egyptian, and I I I managed to uh, enjoy that and benefit from that, and ben- uh, you know have make a lot of friends through that as well. So Alhamdulillah, um, uh, it's really important to le- learn the language of the per- of the people that you are with because you know we learned that uh, knowing the language of a people saves you from their deceptions and from their harms because you know what they're saying to you, right? And so learning the language is important, but if you can't, then alhamdulillah, it's not a problem, it's not a big deal. MashaAllah. Um, any tips or advice you'd give to parents or guardians? Hmm. I think I've said some stuff before about, you know, um, realizing, understanding your child, you know, you've got to understand your child. And that understanding of the child happens by spending time with them. by focusing on them not by being on tiktok and snapchat while they're doing everything else um can then there's no communication you don't know what your child likes what he's about what his moods are like you got and i think of course to be fair all most parents know what their child's like mm. okay and so you understand the child see what his limits are see what his uh, talents are see what he's going to be good at see what he's going to enjoy um, so that's to notice his inclination or her inclination first and then to nourish and to guide that Uh, so not to try and enforce anything they would obviously pressure and, and guide and you know uh, encourage and force to a certain uh, extent especially as kids because they don't know what they want yet properly and you've got to sort of educate them on what's good and what's bad and etc uh, but still you've got to be you've got to understand who's got the inclination and what kind of inclinations and uh, try to push them and have hikmah in the way you make a plan for them and make it fun and make it You know, there's a lot that we can benefit from. Even the primary schools, how they teach kids. You know, how they teach kids is a very beautiful method of how they can control and teach kids. I'm talking about the method, you know, and how they can keep them entertained and how kids love to go to school. And these are things that we can learn from, inshallah, um, to make our teaching of the Quran um, uh, more enjoyable for them and for us as well, inshallah. Um, is there anything you would have done differently? That I've done differently. Like, is there anything you would have done differently? Oh, oh yeah, man! So many things. <laughs> But you know what? It's it's I, I it's hard to tell because Allah Alam. Maybe if I did it differently, I wouldn't have the next you know piece of the puzzle may not have fitted in, and I may not have end up where I am now. And uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm 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 happy to I'm pleased with Allah for His decision to for putting me where I am now. Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed me in so many ways. Alhamdulillah, may Allah. Uh, you know, uh, continue to bless us all. Amin, Rabbil Alameen. Mm-hmm. And so it's, Wallahi, you know, uh, if it was like that, if it was like this, I don't really think like that. Wallahi, I try not to think like that as well. And it's, it's better not to think like that as well. But if I was to do something differently in terms of my education, that would have made my hips more stronger earlier. I would have focused a bit more on my classes and so that I don't have to go back and forth so much. I would have done better in my exams. So these kind of stuff that I would have done better, inshallah, I would have if I, if I could. MashaAllah. I've um, got a question from the comments. Is it recommended to learn Arabic whilst learning Quran hymns or should it be done after or before? There is no system as such. I mean, it's not a problem. You could, there are millions of Quran and Huffad who, are not, who, are, who don't speak Arabic. 
you know, learning the Arabic is is important to the Quran and to understand the Quran. But the Rafi will have become half of the Quran without the Sarukh stuff for Allah. Without Arabic, I can become half of the Quran. Um, that reminds me, Sheikh Masrau said once that he he hasn't recited the Quran by looking in the Quran for more than fifty years. Um, so that's an example of an amazing person who's really, really gone far. Anyway, about the the uh, Arabic, you can learn Arabic before or after. It's not a problem. If you can learn it before, Alhamdulillah. If you can learn it after, it's fine. But learning it before would help because you can understand as you memorize. And and uh, but it's not a condition of becoming a half. Any special advice for female reciters? Um, uh, maybe, uh, maybe uh, it would be good to know what do you mean by that. Female reciters, if you mean like what kind of special special advice would be that it's the same. We all follow the Quran and we all recite Quran for the sake of Allah and we try to master it to the best of our ability. And there are famous Qurra, female uh, muallimat, the Quran, you know, Sahibatul Quran um, across the world and who have who are Sahibatul Asani, then they teach Quran and they teach give ijazah to hundreds, uh, you know, and they are there and so. You know, and I I feel as though there's a, a bit of a laxed approach to teaching our girls Quran, and that shouldn't be the case. The the, the, the females, uh, and the kids and the, and our girls are they can be amazing Quran and amazing ustads of the Quran, and amazing khuddam of the Deen and the Quran. And so, in fact, they can perhaps do more than men can do sometimes because there's such a lack of female teachers out there. Okay, so we're going to end it with one more question from the comments. Um... Where's Cardi Sub from? <laughs> oh, do you want to see outside my window? <laughs> <laughs> I'm originally from Bangladesh, Silet, and I live here in London. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, brothers and sisters, we're going to wrap things up now. Apologies, we couldn't answer all the questions. Um, anyone who has joined us recently or halfway, this video will be available at the end of the day, so you can watch it then. Um, have an announcement to make tomorrow we have a event with um sheikh Abdul faraz Abdul faraz did mashallah join this event as well and he did comment a few things as well alhamdulillah and the topic is how to make the most out of your duas it will be tomorrow and the following sunday so tomorrow and the following sunday from 3 to 4 p.m so to keep up to date with our events please subscribe to our youtube channel follow our facebook page and before we wrap up, I'm going to ask, request Qadi Sab to close the program with a dua. But firstly, I want to say Jazakallah Khair for everyone who joined. Jazakallah Khair to Qadi Ashik for giving us time out of his busy schedule. And I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their Ramadan. Be busy in ibadah and please do remember all of us in your duas. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, um, yes, uh, Rabbana <laughs> اللهم تقبل منا لخدمة دينك يا رب العالمين اللهم وفقنا لكل خير يا رب العالمين وتقبل منا ما وفقتنا من العمل الصالح يا رب العالمين اللهم بلغنا ليلة القدر يا رب العالمين اللهم اللهم يا الله ارزقنا صيام رمضان وقيامه يا الله كما تحب وترضى اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فعفو أن تقبل منا صيامنا وقيامنا وقراءتنا كما تقبلت من عبادك الصالحين يا رب العالمين وصل الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين آمين برحمتك رحمة الرحمن السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته from myself also. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله.